Good afternoon. What a wonderful day we have this first Sunday in October. And so glad you could join me this afternoon as we are looking at Psalm chapter 20. I uh, hope you have your Bibles handy. Uh, go ahead and get them handy and open them to Psalm 20. We'll be there in just one moment. Uh, had uh, a good crowd. Didn't get the actual number uh, this morning on who, how many we had here, but we had some visitors here. Always nice to have visitors, and uh, uh, but it's, and it's also nice to have our members. We had several watching online this morning uh, as we looked at the Bride of Christ. I pray that uh, uh, the sermon was in line with the the teachings in the Bible, and I pray that it made sense and and, and that you got something out of that this morning. Uh, so such a, a wonderful day to be able to worship our Creator uh, this morning. But this evening we're going to be looking at it, Psalm chapter 20, a very short psalm uh, of, of David. And, and many people think about this psalm that, that uh, this is a, a psalm which is uh, about to proceed a war. Uh, it could be uh, the, psalm, the, the war that, that happens in uh, 2 Samuel chapter 8. Or Second Samuel chapter eleven, uh, we we don't know exactly when David wrote this psalm, but but most people think this is a a psalm that that David wrote that that is about to pre, uh, to proceed a, a, a war, an upcoming war that that the children of Israel are going to have to fight. So uh, this is this is a psalm that that we can even relate to today. And as we go through it, so again, nine short nine verses, uh, and let's get through this uh, as 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 quickly, but as thoroughly as possible uh, this afternoon. So let's go ahead and begin, and let's look at Psalm chapter one. Uh, they they again they attribute this psalm to David, and David writes in verse one, "May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble." May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. Uh, may, may, may God answer you in your day of uh, affliction or, or your day when you're being attacked. You know, when, when Satan when Satan goes and, and attacks us on a, on a daily basis, uh, we, we need to we need to be able to pray to God and, and we do have that that opportunity as faithful Christians uh, that then we know that God will, will listen to us. And he says, you know, I'm, I'm looking toward God to defend me or to defend those who are in trouble. Look at verse 2. He, he says in verse 2, may, may he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. Remember where this sanctuary was uh, in David's time. This sanctuary uh, would have been the Ark of the Covenant. And this is where they believed that God dwelled was in between the cherubims, and and God was this was their sanctuary, if you will. We don't we don't have a a per called sanctuary as as they would have uh, today. Many people believe that the church building is a a sanctuary that it's holy, but it's just a building. We are the sanctuary. God is our our sanctuary today. Uh, he will send send help from Himself. He says, may he strengthen you out of Zion. Remember, this is where David placed the ark in 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 1. Uh, we, we read that this uh, when Solomon was, was over the kingdom, it says that this is where Zion is where David had placed uh, the ark of the covenant. So, so here you have the ark there. And he says, remember it. And he says, verse 3, may... May he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. And then the word Shelah there. That word, <coughs> excuse me, means pause. Uh, remember, these were, were psalms. They were songs that they would sing. And so this means pause. So he says here, may he remember all your offerings. Remember the king's. Before they would go to battle, uh, would always ask the priest to all make an offering to God. Uh, remember, in particular, one time in First Samuel chapter thirteen, where Saul was about to go to war, and uh, he was told to go and wait 
for Samuel, the prophet, uh, to come and, and to offer sacrifice to God. And, 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 and Saul waited. King Saul waited about a week, and Samuel didn't show up. So what did King Saul do? It was very important to him to make a sacrifice. Well, he went against God's wishes, and he made the sacrifice himself that he wasn't supposed to make. But this is how much they they believed that the sacrifice would help them in war, and it did. But but the problem was Saul went went about it the wrong way, and we, we find out that the Lord left Saul uh, at that time. And, and, and in the next chapter is when, when Samuel was told, hey, you need to go and you need to find another king. And you need to look, God tells you, you need to look in, in the house of Jesse. Tells him where to look uh, uh, for this king. So here he says, hey, may he remember all your offerings except your burnt sacrifice. Of course, we don't we don't offer burnt sacrifices today. Uh, but we, we can ask that God remember our, our sacrifices, that God God remembers our offerings. You know, we, we are to offer our body, our uh, everything about us as, as a sacrifice to God, Romans chapter 12, uh, verse 1 and 2. Uh, that, that's what we are to do uh, with our lives. That's the reasonable thing the King James Version says that we can do. Verse 4. David says, may he grant you according to your heart's desires and fulfill all your purpose. In other words, may you accomplish all that you hope in this expedition that you're going to do, David. Uh, you know, this 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 war, may, may you accomplish everything that you you plan on doing. Uh, we, we need to, to be praying that prayer. May, may God, may you may you grant me according to your heart's desire. Or make make to to fulfill my purpose. What's our purpose in life? Our purpose in life is to be saved, come to the knowledge of the truth. Our purpose in life is to to lead others uh, to 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 righteousness. In other words, tell them about the truth that is found only uh, in the Bible that comes from God, not in our minds, not in our thoughts. It's only found in the Bible. That's our purpose. He says here, verse five. We will rejoice in your salvation. In other words, your triumph over your enemies. That's that's what we're looking for. We're looking to be triumphant over our enemy, Satan, uh, as he wanders through this world like a lion, seeking whom he may devour, Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. Uh, we, we want to conquer that by remaining faithful, knowing that Jesus is ultimately defeated him, already defeated him when he defeated death, and he will definitely give the, the final blow upon his second coming and judgment. He says later on in that chapter, or that verse, he says, in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. In other words, we will plant them on the enemy's fort. When we conquer them, uh, we will plant our banners on the enemy's fort. May the God or may the Lord fulfill all your petitions. In other words, may God answer all your prayers. We got to remember that that's what we want God to do for us. You know, Romans chapter 8, verse 27 to 28, talking about how, how, how the Holy Spirit uh, inter, intersects, inter, intercedes rather, uh, in, in our prayers, uh, you know, when we just don't know what to say. Uh, and how, how, you know, God listens to the prayers uh, of the saints. He says in verse 6, he says, Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer from his holy hill, and with his saving strength, or the, the saving strength of his right hand. This word saves there. He, I know that the Lord saves. Many commentaries that I read, uh, you know, when I was looking at this psalm, says that that word save saves there could be past tense. In other words, David could be saying, now I know that the Lord has saved in the past, his anointed. Of course, you know, some people will say, well, that's talking about Christ. No, David was God's anointed uh, king at the time. Uh, so, you know, the, he's the one that God had, had set apart, had anointed, had named 
uh, to be the king of Israel. And so David's saying here, uh, you know, pretty much that I know you've taken care of me. You've taken care of me in the past. You'll, you'll take care of me now. You'll, you'll answer, you know, he will answer him from his holy hill, talking about me, or David rather, talking about himself. He says, with the saving strength of his right hand, that's where God's power is. Uh, God's power is always affiliated with the right hand. That's why it, it talks about Christ uh, sitting uh, at his right hand or standing, Acts chapter 8, uh, in or Acts chapter 7 rather, in, at, at the right hand of God. Then he says in, in verse 7, he says, you know, some people are going to trust in, in outside things. He says, some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. So, you know, this, this trusting in chariots and horses, that's vanity. Uh, one, one thing about preaching school that I always remember uh, is the about the horses. I remember sitting in, uh, at... Uh, the feet of brother Jerry Martin, uh, as he taught us in Joshua. And, uh, you think about how vain this was for them to trust in their chariots and their horses, uh, because he would say, how do you defeat a horse? And he would take us to Joshua chapter six. And I, and I've got the ASV version here, um, because he used the ASV and it says here and that Joshua is told, Jehovah tells Joshua, God tells Joshua, be not afraid of them, for tomorrow at this time I will deliver them up all slain before Israel. And listen to what he tells them how to defeat their horses. He said, you shall, thou shalt hawk their horses, burn their chariots with fire. The, the, the hawking of a horse. How do you defeat a hawk horse? You hawk a horse. Um, and that was that was our thing, you know, throughout that so that quarter we would talk about, you know, how do we win? We hawk the horse. In other words, you cut the horse in its, uh, in its hamstring and it's not going to be able to run. It's not going to be able to walk. And, uh, and he would say, you know, here, of course, David says, you know, you trust in, a, in your chariots. You, you, what can they, what happens to chariots? Well, they can be burned. You, you trust in your horses. What happens to your horses? Well, well, they can be hawked. In other words, they can be they can be injured where they they don't run. Uh, you know, they can't even walk anymore uh, without it hurting. So you're not going to be able to ride them. So so he says we're going to trust. Uh, you know, if we go back to verse seven, he says we're going to trust. We're going to remember or trust in the name of the Lord. That's who's who's who we're going to put our trust. That's where our trust is going to be. That's where our trust needs to be today. Not saying we don't need to be, we don't need to be thinking about, you know, taking precautions, especially, you know, uh, with, with everything going on, especially with this virus. You know, I, I've heard people take it to the stream. Well, I'm not going to wear a mask or I'm not going to, to wash my hands or I'm not going to not go places. Uh, I'm going to trust in the Lord. Well, the Lord's given us common sense to, and He through His providence, He's given us doctors uh, to tell us that would be like, you know, getting some kind of disease. You know, let's go cancer for, for uh, you know, for for example purposes. Just about every family has been affected by cancer, but if you were to get cancer today and go, you know, I, I'm I got stage one cancer, but I'm not going to take any treatments. I'm just going to trust in the Lord. And and uh, my cancer will go away, and you don't do anything to fix it. You've got diabetes. I'm not going to take uh, insulin. I'm just going to trust in the Lord. Uh, you you have heart issues. I'm not going to go have heart surgery. I've got a blockage, but I'm not going to have heart surgery. I'm just going to trust in the Lord. None of us would say that, but but uh, you know, with other things, we're we're you know, we take this to the extreme. And go well. I'm not going to wear a mask. I'm not going to trust in the Lord. I'm not going to going to sanitize. I'm going to trust in the Lord. I'm not going to change anything. I'm doing. I'm just going to trust in the Lord. Well, the Lord's wanting you to trust in in His providence, and through His providence, uh, He He gives us doctors and nurses that knows what best for us. Uh, you know, some people want to make this political, and that's fine if that's what you want to do. I'm not going to do that during this this. I'm not going to talk about political things at all during during this uh, thing. But we need to we need to remember and trust in the name of God, but we need to trust in that uh, in His providence also in what He gives us. Let's look at verse uh, eight and nine as we get ready to to close this out. He says, "But they have bowed down and fallen," talking about the enemy. And but we have risen 
and stand upright. When God's in the fight, we've got to realize this. The, even our fight with Satan. When God's in the fight, the enemy loses before the battle even begins. Before this battle even began, David is saying they're gonna they're gonna fall. They're gonna fall, and we're gonna stand. Why? Because God's on our side, folks. If as long as we don't give in to Satan, he's gonna lose. The only way Satan can win, he can't win the final battle. He can only win small small battles. He can't win the war. He can only win small battles when he gets to us. When we allow him to get to us. He doesn't get to us unless we allow it. It's up to us to stand with God. That's what we talked about this morning. When we're married to Christ, Romans chapter 7 and verse 4, it's up to me to decide to cheat on him. He's ne he'll, ne he'll never cheat on me. But it's up to me to cheat on him. If I go follow Satan or if I go back out in the world, I'm committing spiritual adultery on Christ. I can't do that. I need to be faithful to Christ. And I, and I can do that as long as I don't give in to Satan. As long as you know, Satan's already lost the battle, there's no reason for me to, to give in and go on his side. He's already lost. You know, think about it. You know, that would be like today, uh, uh, rooting for a team, uh, you know, a football, you know, we're in the football season, rooting for, for a team uh, that's even lost before they even got on the field. You know, uh, every every given Saturday, a, a team can win in the SEC, upset another team. We know that. Any given Sunday, NFL teams can be upset by other NFL teams. That's why they play the game. Hey, this game's already been decided. The outcome of this game's already been decided. This is, you know, the outcome of, of life has already been decided. Satan's going to lose. I just got to decide which team I'm going to be on. Do I want to be on the losing team? Do, do those... Do, you know, let's think about Vanderbilt. For those who are not watching college football, don't care about college football, I apologize for the horrible analogy. But for those who watch college football, Vanderbilt is always the, you know, 90% of the time they're, they're bringing up the basement, uh, if you will, in, in SEC football. But that's not, that's not where they want to be. They go out and compete and try to win. They had a, they had a, a season a, a few years ago, back about 10 years ago, well, they came real close to winning uh, the SEC East. I think they finished second. They were really good, you know. But if Vanderbilt knew coming out, you know, hey, we're going to lose every game this year, you know, Arkansas just snapped a, a 20 win, uh, a 20 winless streak in the SEC yesterday by beating Mississippi State. You know, if I guarantee you, after the the 20th loss. In SEC play, they were probably thinking, why are we even playing? But what did they do? They knew that it wasn't guaranteed for them to lose the, the very next week. And guess what? They didn't. So that's the reason they played, because they had a chance. Folks, if I'm on Satan's team, I don't stand a chance. I don't stand a chance. I'm going to lose if I am on Satan's team. The only way I can be on the winning team is to be on God's side. Because God will win. We know that. We've already seen the end of this movie. We win. God wins. And therefore, that's the side that I want to be on. And that's what David is saying here. Before the battle even began, they lose. Why? Because God's not on their side. We win. Why? Because David says, because God's on our side. Even before the battle even begins, David knew the outcome. Guess what? We do too. Let's close by looking at verse 9. And he gives the praise to God. Save, save, Lord. May the king answer us when we call. Some believe that this means, in other words, God save the king or protect the king uh, when, when trouble comes. We need to be doing that same thing. Prayer, Lord, protect this country uh, when trouble comes. Protect the church, more importantly, when trouble comes. Uh, I'm a very patriotic, patriotic, patriotic person, person who loves uh, uh, this country of, of America. But I need to love the church more. Uh, I've seen more church members get more excited about this country and about an election and feel more whether it doesn't matter what side you're on 
but but you feel more outspoken for this election than I've ever seen them outspoken for the Lord. Um, we need to to pray that God protects this country, but first and foremost, we need to be on His side. We need to be on God's side spiritually because that's the winning side. David says here in chapter 20, uh, he, he says, look, I, I want to be on the Lord's side. I want to be on the winning side. I know as I go out to battle that that's going to be a battle. But I know as long as God is on my side and I'm on God's side, oh, I'm going to win. Every morning we need to wake up and go, hey, I know I'm in for the fight of my life today with Satan. He's going to do something to either either make me angry, to make me sin, uh, to tempt me to sin. He's going he's going to do something, some temptation he's going to throw out there. He Satan's going to try to use people to get to me. Uh, it may be my family, it may be my friends, it may be a complete stranger. Uh, Satan's going to use others to get to me. Satan's going to use my own desires, my own faults to get to me. But I know. I can get through this day on the winning side as long as I remain faithful to God. Because I know if God's on my side, as Paul says in Romans chapter 8, if God be for us, who can be against us? Uh, I've enjoyed this very quick study on Psalm 20. I hope you 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 learn something from this and, and can, can wake up every morning going, I'm going to be on the Lord's side. That's the winning side. Hope you have a great week. Continue to pray for all those that we've been talking about. Pray for all those mentioned in our announcements this morning. And remember to continue to give God all the glory this week. Hope you have a great week. Until next time, remember, we start in person Wednesday night, 630. Hope you can join us either live stream or in person here at the building. Uh, Lord willing, we'll be looking at the book of Job uh, beginning this Sunday or this Wednesday night, 630. Have a great week, Shiloh. Have a great week for all those who are watching. Uh, remember to give God all the glory. Take care.